Hey, this is Neighbor Argetsy, and bringing you some of the best comics that you might not know yet, but you're about to get to know them. And don't worry, they're going to be on their best behavior. We shot this live in Nashville, Tennessee at Zany's. It's the Nate Land Showcase. Please welcome our host and my friend, Dusty Slick. A lot of times hosts will come out and they'll be like, let's make some noise. And then you'll make like a lot of noise and they'll go, I can't hear you. And they'll make you do it again, but louder. And I'm like, I don't do that because I can hear you. <laughs> I hate when I'm in an audience and they're like, I can't hear you. I'm like, you heard us. <laughs> don't make us do it over and over again. We're not puppets out here for you. You know what I mean? We hear you. And if you can't hear me, clean your ears out. You know what I mean? Get a Q-tip. Work it a little bit. That's what I'm saying. But maybe I should do that with this audience just because I can't hear you. Matter of fact, matter of fact, I can't hear what's going on. And I cleaned my ears twice today. Not because it needed it, because I like that sort of stuff. You know what I mean? I love cleaning my ears. I love to clean my ears with Q-tips. You know, I, never, I know everybody does it, but I'm saying I like doing it. Like, it feels good to me. I'll do it a couple times a day. It's better if you wait a while, though, you know? A little more satisfying if you get a little something on there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, not a lot. You're not like, hey, come check this out. But you want to get a little something on there. You go like that, you go, all right, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> feels like you've accomplished something, like you've cleaned something. That feels good, you know? I love doing it. Like, if I use your bathroom at your house and you got some Q-tips on the counter, I'm going to use a couple. <laughs> Like, if they're on the counter in the cabinets, I mean, I'm looking around. I mean, that, that's why I'm in there is to get some Q-tips. You think I'm washing my hands because the water's running, but that's just a decoy. I'm just throwing you off the scent. I'm really in there getting at it, you know what I mean? Okay. All right, there's an audience full of people that don't enjoy cleaning their ears. Good for you guys. We're having a good time, though. I cleaned my ears one time after I'd been drinking a bit. And uh, that was a mistake. Got a little rough with my ears. A little too deep. Felt a sharp pain. Wasn't hearing as well. <laughs> I was like, I better go to the doctor, you know. I was like, I'm messed up. You can't go to the doctor at 2 a.m. drunk with a Q-tip accident. It kind of gets you pushed to the back of the line. They're like, sir, we have real victims to deal with. Why don't you sit in the corner and think about what you've done? We'll call your name when it's your turn. You won't hear us, but we'll be doing like this. <laughs> be like, hey. I'll be like, I can't hear you. Okay, these are good jokes. Try to get into it. <laughs> so I decided that I would wait on going to the doctor to get my ear checked out. So I said, I'll go in the morning, you know. And I fell asleep. I woke up the next morning, and I had forgotten all about it. But I looked in the mirror. I had a little dried blood coming out of my ear. I was like, oh, dang, I messed up. And I went to the doctor, and they're like, you're not supposed to use Q-tips in your ear. And I was like, oh, I thought that was the sole purpose of a Q-tip. <laughs> now I don't know what I'll do with these 485 Q-tips. I just bought a pack. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're having a good time. I like cologne. I got into cologne for a while. I had a real cologne phase happening. I used to spray on some cologne and go out and meet people. And uh, people never liked me in Cologne. No one was ever like, ooh, you smell good. They were always like, who's wearing Cologne? <laughs> I put that joke on the internet one time, and a lot of people got upset about it. A lot of dudes got upset. Apparently, there are a lot of guys wearing Cologne and having a lot of success with it. But that was not the case for me. And these guys were like, oh, you're probably bathing in it. Probably wearing the cheap stuff. And both are probably true. <laughs> I had a couple of bottles of the Tim McGraw collection. <laughs> I got him as gifts, and I don't know what he knows about cologne. <laughs> you guys know who Tim McGraw is? Yeah, very famous cologne maker from... Uh... <laughs> you know, he got his start in some other areas, but he made some cologne, and that still makes him a famous cologne maker. You know what I mean? I don't know if he's doing it at home in his spare time. I'm mixing up a little cologne potion. This is how I got Faith Hill, is this cologne potion here. A little dating humor for you. I think this is going well. 
<laughs> I feel good. I do feel good. We're having a good time, and uh, we are having a good time. I like to tell people we're having a good time, you know? I don't like to ask. <laughs> a lot of comics come out here. They go, are we having a good time? Not me. I can't risk it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I do a lot of comedy. I did a show one time at this place, and I missed, it was a, like a corporate event, and I missed the dinner. And this guy goes, I'm going to get you some food. He was on his phone. He goes, I'm going to get you some food. I go, oh, okay. He goes, what do you want? And I was like, I don't know. What are the options? He goes, anything. <laughs> I was like, oh, dang, anything. <laughs> I've never been given the option of anything. I didn't even know where to begin. I, get, I got too overwhelmed with what to, I didn't have a menu. I was just like, anything. And I go, I don't know, just something with chicken. He goes, all we got is popcorn. I mean, I don't know how we went from anything to nothing so fast. I mean, this guy was just taking a chance. He was like, I'm going to say anything, but I hope he says popcorn. If he says popcorn, this is going to be a victory for us all here. But I ate the popcorn. I like to eat popcorn before I do a show. I like there to be a kernel wedged in between my teeth that I fiddle around with my tongue for most of the show and can't really focus on what I'm doing. I go, I hope that won't be in there forever because I will not be seeing a dentist, I'll tell you that. I didn't grow up seeing a lot of dentists. We never had the tooth fairy growing up. We had the opposite of the tooth fairy. We just had a guy that would come in, steal your money, and leave teeth. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. I grew up poor. That's how it is. We never had ice cream growing up. My mom would just come into the room my mom would just come into the room. She'd pour milk into a bowl. And then she'd call me into the room and go, well, you're too late. <laughs> Already melted. She's like, I guess you'll come next time I call you. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's fun. And, uh... Yeah, we're having a good time. And um, I never had a sandbox growing up either. We just had to play with our toys out in the driveway because it was sand. And that was fine until one day my dad came home early and ran over all my Tonka trucks. <laughs> then he tried to get mad at me, you know, for not, li not picking them up. I was like, Dad, the crane stays at the job site till the job's done. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's why I didn't get into construction. You know what I mean? Too many politics. Years ago, that joke worked two or three times, and I convinced myself that it was a pretty good joke. It is true, though. It's funny that your dad runs over your toys and then gets mad at you. You know what I mean? It's like, why don't you look where you're going, man? Why are you pulling in the driveway all fast like that? You know what I mean? Take it easy. Okay. We're having a good time. Uh, they came by paving the road out there. I don't know if you heard it, but it smells like asphalt in here. And uh, I don't know if you're supposed to breathe in oil and rock like that. <laughs> All right, let's keep the show going. It's been very funny. It's going to get funnier. Please give it up for the very funny Jim Flanagan. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. So great to be here. It's good to see people out again, right? I got to go to a wedding recently. My brother just got married for the third time. And uh, thank you very much. He got mad at me because I was late for the rehearsal. You know, he was like, we have to practice. And I was like, we've practiced enough, okay? <laughs> at this point, my speech is basically a Mad Lib, you know? <laughs> Change a name, couple new adjectives, read it to half new people. That's, that's how it works. I've never been married. I'm in my 40s. I used to think never being married was the best resume for dating. Now that I'm 40, I don't think so anymore. Now I think divorced is the way to go. Because you know? if you're divorced, you've got someone to blame. That sounds awesome. <laughs> when you're dating at 40, everyone wants to know your story. And if you're divorced, you can be like, Vanessa's a jerk, Brian's a narcissist. I can't do that. I can't just blame everybody. Someone's like, why haven't you been married? I can't just be like, women are picky. Mm. <laughs> I'm doing my part, they'll figure it out one of these days. They'll get there. I like being single most of the time. The only time it bothers me is when I have a new hobby and I have to fill out an emergency contact form. Because the only thing more embarrassing than something bad happening to you is something bad happening and then someone going, quick, he's hurt. Call his mom. <laughs> Don't worry, dear, we'll call your mommy. We'll use the number you put on the form. She'll be here in a little bit. 
I've solved that problem. I put my friends' names on those forms now, and I tell them. They love the responsibility. I'll call them. I'll be like, Brian, I'm throwing axes on Sunday. You're on the clock from 3 till 7. <laughs> like, I'm not ruining anyone's day, but they're not going to go see a movie. <laughs> Uh, one of my hobbies last year, this is a real thing that happened to me, I was riding a bike, I went out for uh, my first bike ride on a brand new bike and I got hit by a car, okay? I'm um, fine now, unless any of you work for State Farm Insurance. <laughs> and if you do, I'm still under continuing doctor supervision. We're working through a few things on the back end. The person who hit me, she was so nice. She waited for help to arrive, but just kept saying the same thing over and over and kept just going, ah, I just... I just didn't see you there. I just didn't see you there. And eventually I wanted to help. So I was like, hey, listen, you don't need to say that part. I know you didn't see me there. That's implied. <laughs> you not seeing me there is the basis of our whole conversation. I can't even imagine a scenario where you saw me hit me with your car and then came over to talk about it. I just don't even know what that would look like, you know? You're just kicking around the debris and you're like, oh, hey, you made it. All right, I should probably explain a few things. Uh, I saw you there, I did, and uh, whew, I got mad, you know? So I was just like, we gotta get rid of him. So, uh, so I drove as fast as I could. <laughs> and if I see you again, I'm gonna keep trying. I really, I really wanna finish the job. Anyway, I called your mom. She's on her way. She's <laughs> going to be here in a little bit. I've been dating too long. I know my deal breaker. I can't date a woman who has uh, enlarged the font size on her phone all the way. <laughs> yeah, they are all over my key demographic. <laughs> and listen, before you go and write a largely worded letter, let me just say... <laughs> you just can't send sense of information to someone who doesn't know they're getting it. That's crazy. <laughs> It's like sending your deepest, darkest secrets to an overhead projector, you know? I'm losing my hair in the back of my head where everyone but me can see it. <laughs> but that's a fun thing to find out last, you know? My bald spot's been in my blind spot the whole time. No one mentioned it to me anywhere along the way. I went to a new barber recently. He did this thing after he cut my hair where he brought out a second mirror and showed me the back of my head. I was like, why would you do that? We were having a good time. We were getting along great. I was going to tip real good. And then you're going to go and remind me of the situation back there? If I were a barber cutting someone's hair and part of it was missing, I would never show that to them after the haircut, right? I would show it to them before the haircut to remind them that this was a pre-existing condition. <laughs> You walked in damaged. I'd have a clipboard and paperwork like a rental car agency at the airport, you know? Like, I'm gonna take a walk around. All right, let me see what happened. A little bit of damage on the sides. I gotta mark it all down. You know how this goes. I don't know what happened here in the back, but we're gonna have to call a manager before we go any further. Maybe take some photos. It was my first time at this barber shop, and they said, hey, since it's your first time here, we'll give you the hot towel at no extra charge. Ladies, I don't even know if you know about this, but at men's barber shops, we got two options. We can either get a regular haircut, or for a few bucks extra, once they're done cutting your hair, they'll throw a really hot towel on your face. <laughs> Just for the heck of it, you know? <laughs> like we all do at the end of a long day, right fellas? <laughs> Microwave a towel, lean back on the sink, and relax. Just let go. <laughs> That's what they do, right? They wet a towel as wet as they can get it. And then they heat it as hot as they possibly can where probably the same microwave they're making lunch in, but don't worry about that. Don't ever, don't ever think about that again. And they heat it to where it's so hot, they can't even pick it up with their fingers. That's how hot it is. They have to use tongs to pick it up because it's so hot, they can't even touch it because it's so hot. And then they shake it one time because that's all it takes, just one little shake. Then they take the corner of that towel and gently press it to the corner of my face and go, hey, is that too hot? Is that too hot? And I said, no, I don't think so. And then, uh, and then they smother me with it, yeah. And I was like, oh, I was wrong. That's way too hot. Please stop. But they can't hear me because while they're ironing my face, it's keeping all the yelling inside. So they're just pressing down harder while I'm just yelling secrets into the abyss. They're like, we're opening your pores. I'm like, you're searing my flesh. There's got to be a way to keep the pores open and the skin intact at the same time. 
I don't even know why they're doing this. Does it feel good? Kind of, eventually, once my face stops burning. But that's probably how my face felt when I walked in that day. You can't just start putting out cigarettes on people because it feels good when you stop. That's not a business plan, that's a crime. But these guys can charge eight bucks for hot waterboarding and I'm the only one who sees a problem? I got the worst compliment I've ever heard from a woman after the show the other night and I can't stop thinking about it. This woman walked up to me and she goes, uh, she goes, I find something really attractive about you and I have no idea what it is. It's like, wow. I, uh, hope it wasn't my self-esteem. Screwed that up for a long time. You guys have been a lot of fun. I'm Jim Flanagan. Thank you very much. All right, what a hot set. Jim Flanagan. That was good. He said he was divorced. I don't know if he said he got remarried, but I think women like divorced men because my dad's been married four times. So you got to think after the third one, the woman would be like, I don't know, maybe there's a problem here. But I think if he got divorced, he'd get remarried, I think. And I guess this wasn't a full joke, but... Um... <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm just winging it here, and I thought, hey, this audience will think it's funny that my dad's been married a bunch, but you guys are like, oh, gosh. <laughs> so, and I think that's the appropriate response, I'll be honest with you. My dad met his fourth wife in Panama City Beach and uh, been the most successful one, so I got a toe fungus in Panama City Beach that <laughs> lasted longer than the marriage, but um, <laughs> okay. All right, listen. We're having a good time here, and uh, let's keep it rolling. Your next comic, very funny guy. Please give it up for Renard Hirsch. Uh, what's up, everybody? How y'all doing? Y'all make some noise. There we go. There we go, man. Glad to be here, man. Glad y'all came out here tonight, man. I'm going to let you know something, man. Um... The nation is going through uh, a big change, you know, like every city, like they're revitalizing all the downtown areas. And uh, we're losing like a lot of the, the old stuff that makes cities great, but we're getting some new stuff too. Like the other day, my homegirl had invited me over to this private bar that we have in town. So we went to the bar, we're drinking, we're having food, we're having a good time. I'm like, I like this place. And she's like, yeah, this is cool, you should get a membership. And I'm like, oh, how much is the membership? She's like, oh, about three, four thousand dollars. I'm like, oh, I don't have that. <laughs> She's like, oh, you don't have to worry about it. You can just talk to your accountant and write it off on your taxes. And I'm like, yeah, I'll go home and see what TurboTax thinks about this. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see what HNLBlock.com thinks about this situation. I, <laughs> I do not have an accountant. I'm not even in a tax bracket. I'm just in the parentheses at the bottom. <laughs> Do my taxes in 10 minutes. <laughs> Crime is getting out of control, y'all. Crime is getting out of control. I got Rob coming out of the grocery store the other day. I'm walking out the grocery store. I got all my bags with me. I'm walking out. As soon as I get to the parking lot, a guy walks up, puts a pistol right in my face. I knew what it was. I've been in this situation before. I reached in, grabbed my wallet, gave it to him. He looked at my wallet, threw it across the parking lot. He's like, I don't want this. I'm like, what do you want? He's like, sucker, I want the eggs. <laughs> I'm like, you want my eggs? I reached in my bag. I got ready to pull them out. And then I saw the price tag on them. I was like, nah, you're going to kill me, man. I think uh, <laughs> I'm not giving up my eggs. I'm not doing it. <laughs> you used to work in education, y'all. You used to work in education. I had to get out of that. Uh, you know, just for the simple fact that it was starting to make me racist against my own people. <laughs> and I see some of y'all looking at me like, brother, who are your people? <laughs> yeah, I saw y'all when I came up here. Y'all like, that brother looks like all of them. <laughs> I'm not going to try to guess his nationality. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> it's okay, y'all. It's okay, y'all. Just a light-skinned black guy, y'all. It's light-skinned black. I'm like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Negro. <laughs> <laughs> gotta keep an eye out, you gotta keep an eye out. <laughs> it was tough, man, working in that job, man, because I ain't looking like this, it made it tough because I worked around high school kids. And any of y'all know, if any of y'all got high school kids or you spend time around young folks today, you know young folks are different than we were growing up. You know, like we were growing up, we knew when to be quiet. 
We knew when to shut up. <laughs> These kids, they don't. They're like, if it comes in their brain, they will say anything. You know, like one day I was, uh, I was talking to another teacher one day, and we're sitting over there trying to figure something out. And then out of nowhere, a kid stands up in the back of the class and yells out, Hey, uh, excuse me, man. Anybody ever told you that you look like Abraham Lincoln and the rapper Drake had a baby? <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, he's like, no, yeah, I'm just saying, you look like Drake Abraham Lincoln. I don't know if anybody ever told you. I, I just, <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> he's like, no, I'm just saying, you look like you freed the slaves, then you try to rap about it. That's what I'm just saying. <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, man, you know what? I'm going to emancipate your proclamation. <laughs> I'm say anything. Tell y'all some people I don't trust, people I don't trust, or weather people. I don't trust the weather people. And not because they get the weather wrong every now and then, just because I've noticed that around the country, a lot of people at every news station, somebody has a weather-related name that I don't think they were born with. <laughs> you know? Yeah, they'll be sitting there, they'll be like, oh, that was a gruesome murder, Bob. Well, on a lighter note, let's kick it on over to hear about the weather. Let's talk to Henry Hurricane. <laughs> like, Henry Hurricane? Was like, this is Danny Doppler 5. You know? <laughs> this is Kenny category for us. Like, what is this? <laughs> Gale Force wins. Y'all know Gale? <laughs> real cool lady, real good. <laughs> tell y'all, I got to uh, tell you guys this, man. Y'all, good crowd, cool crowd. Uh, I can tell you guys, uh, uh, I'm not really proud of this, but uh, I, uh, I participated uh, in some racist activity, y'all. Yeah. Don't like to admit it, but I did. Yeah, me, as a white black man. <laughs> I participated in the racist activity, but it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. It was the school system's fault. Because here, uh, I grew up here in Nashville, Tennessee, and anybody knows, if you grew up here in Nashville, Tennessee, there was a field trip that everybody took. And this field trip was to the Hermitage Plantation. All right? And now, if anybody doesn't know, the Hermitage Plantation was our former president, Andrew Jackson's plantation home that he lived in when he lived here in Tennessee. And so this plantation has everything that a normal plantation has. You know, they got the little house with the big white columns, you know. They've got the well you can get water from. Um, they got a souvenir shop. You know. yeah, it wasn't there then, but it's there now. Uh, <laughs> and then we got over there to the field. We get over there to this field, and we, got to, we walk up there to it, and the tour guide's telling us all about it. She's like, hey, guys, want to let you guys know that what, once was, what grows in this clear field right here was once Tennessee's cash crop. And I'm going to let you guys know today, if anybody here would like to pick a souvenir, feel free to pick you a souvenir. Yeah, so that day, me and some of my black friends picked some cotton. Yeah. <laughs> It was not my best day. I didn't know any better. I was in the third grade. I kept it in my lunchbox for the rest of the year. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, hey, look at that. Look what I got. They're like, like, what is that? You got cotton in your lunchbox? And, <laughs> and then my teacher, she didn't make it any better, you know, because she saw us doing it. And she walked over, and she was like, oh, my goodness, you guys are naturals. <laughs> Have y'all done this before? I'm like, what? <laughs> And then she saw me doing it. She was like, you know what? Hey, you know what? You're a little lighter than your friends. You want to come inside? Why don't you come on this side? I was like, lady, get your hand off me. Hey, y'all, that's my time, y'all. My name is Bernard Hurst. Thank you guys so much. All right. We're having a good time. Renard Hirsch. All right. Keep the energy going. This is a hot show. I like sometimes when an audience is consistent throughout the whole show. Like, sometimes if the audience is not great at the, like the, the, the energy is not great at the beginning and then it's not like great later on, you're like, well, that's fair. You're keeping it consistent. You're not getting, I don't like an audience to get out of control. You know what I mean? Like, don't lose yourself in it. Be who you are. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. What am I saying? We're having a good time though. <laughs> I ate a lot of food today, and uh, this shirt's got snaps in it, so you don't want to eat too much with a snap shirt. You don't want a shirt to snap while you're talking to people. <laughs> Just kind of pop open, and people are like, dang, dude, what's going on? 
you're like, oh, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't know what I mean, do you? Sometimes I say, you know what I mean, and I know that people don't know what I mean. It's not even really a question. It's just framed like a question. I put a question mark at the end, but also an exclamation point. <laughs> okay. Listen, this is a lot of fun. <laughs> but I can't be out here all day. So let's keep the show rolling. This next guy, very funny guy. Please give it up for the very funny Alex Valudo. Hey, how's it going? I just moved here to Nashville, actually. Very exciting. I moved out of a bad neighborhood. I lived next to a golden corral. <laughs> Pretty weird. <laughs> The Golden Corral by my house, they put in a drive through <laughs> at the Golden Corral by my old house. I'm so glad I've never been sad enough to need to go to the Golden Corral drive through <laughs> Like, they need to put a social worker at the entrance just to <laughs> check on people. <laughs> They're like, hey, you don't have to do this. <laughs> there are people who love you. Back away from the drive through drive through that means they want you to say your buffet order <laughs> out loud. <laughs> I've never been that vulnerable with anyone in my whole life. <laughs> I can't even admit my buffet order to myself when I go in there. <laughs> I get my plate, go to get my food, and I black out for five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Wake up at my table, I'm like, oh no. Even when I'm done, I put napkins over the plate <laughs> just so the waitress doesn't know what I did. <laughs> I want you to say it out loud. Someone has to listen to your buffet order. <laughs> Poor Golden Corral worker, just <laughs> all day going, welcome to Golden Corral. Okay, slow down. So you want mashed potatoes and ice cream? <laughs> like together? I just gotta tell you, this is part of the corral training. Those are gonna melt into each other. <laughs> oh, that's what you like, okay. <laughs> no judgments, man. It's sweet and savory. <laughs> and uh, you want chocolate cake? Okay, yeah. I'll try and not get gravy on it. All of a sudden, you're picky. <laughs> oh, the cake's for your birthday. Oh. <laughs> this is sadder than I thought. <laughs> happy, happy birthday, we're all here to sing. Golden Corral drive through has got to be the only place that the government hasn't wiretapped. <laughs> be too sad to listen to. I don't mind that the government listens, actually. People get upset about it. They're like, you know, the government listens to everything that you do through your phone. And I do this. I'm like, good, I could use the followers. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I like that the phones listen. I think it's nice. I like it whenever anyone listens to me. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Phone listens to you, they give you ads <laughs> or products based off of private conversations you've had <laughs> with your friends. I'm like, thanks for listening, phone. I don't even think my friend was listening to that conversation. <laughs> My friend never suggests that I get a nose hair trimmer. <laughs> My phone did. That's a good friend right there. <laughs> Only a real friend would suggest that you get a nose hair trimmer. <laughs> phone is just like, look, I've been looking up at you <laughs> from up the nose levels for years. And let me tell you, you gotta thick it up there. You gotta take care of it. Get a nose hair trimmer. 
my favorite part of that joke is that all your phones heard it. (laughs) 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 Phones listen for free, too. That's nice. It's a good deal. I spend a good amount of money for a therapist to listen to me, and I like that the phone listens for free. I wish, I wish my therapist did ads. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm in there, he's like, I'm like, you know, just having a hard time committing to things. He's like, well, if you have a hard time with commitment, maybe you need a wireless network with no contracts. <laughs> Have you thought about switching to Boost Mobile? <laughs> I'd be like, my therapist is sponsored by Boost Mobile? <laughs> I gotta get a new guy. <laughs> we just got an Alexa in my house. And uh, just as a reminder, my name is Alex, in case you already forgot. <laughs> so, got an Alexa. It's really confusing. Like, and my wife was worried that the Alexa was listening to everything. But I think it's just because they gave Alexa a lady's name. You know what I mean? Like, if it was Alex, she'd be like, oh, yeah, Alex is not listening. <laughs> Alex checked out about five topics ago. <laughs> the Alexa even sounds like me at this point. It's like, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Can you repeat that? Lately, my Alexa's been ghosting my wife. (laughs) She does not like that. She'll talk, it won't respond. She gets so mad. I feel like I have to stand up for the Alexa a little bit. (laughs) She's like, why won't the Alexa listen to me? I'm like, I think it's just because you're saying a lot. Like... (laughs) Really fast, too. You need to... You need to pause when you talk. Just go from topic to topic. and it Maybe Alexa's just trying to process the last five commands you gave it. it. Makes it hard for us. I mean her. Her. She's like, that's what Alexa thinks? I'm like, yeah. I shouldn't call Alexa a lady's name. shouldn't compare it to a woman. Women are way too smart to be compared to Alexa. You know what I mean? Women are actual artificial intelligence. <laughs> you can process thousands of pieces of information <laughs> and have a grudge about all of them simultaneously. <laughs> it's wild. <laughs> Men's brains are more like Alexa. You know, we're just like a simple speech recognition call and response (laughs) type thing. Men just wait around listening for our name. (laughs) And then when we hear it, we give you just enough information (laughs) to make you think we were listening. (laughs) Like if Alexa was really a woman, you wouldn't even have to talk to it. (laughs) She'd talk to you. You'd walk by, not say anything. The Alexa would be like, hey, got a couple things for you to do. (laughs) Are you listening to me? (laughs) Repeat back to me what I just said. (laughs) Hey, thanks very much. Love you. Have a good one. Okay, keep it going for Alex Maluto. What a hot set. Hey, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate you guys coming out tonight. What a great show.